everybody and welcome back to Music with Meg. I'm Meg and today we're going to be learning about the alto clef. Music with Meg. Now the alto clef is basically only used by the viola. There aren't a lot of other instruments that play in the alto clef, so it is quite unusual. It looks like this. Don't confuse the alto clef with the tenor clef. They look identical, but the center point of the alto clef falls on the middle line, which is where middle C sits. So for that reason, the alto clef is sometimes called the C clef. Now the reason some instruments sit on different clefs is to do with the pitch range of the instrument. Let's take the violin, for example. On the violin, middle C is right at the bottom of the instrument. So on the violin, it sits on this bottom string here. Now because of that, we've only got three notes that we need to play below middle C. That's B, A and G. And so it's fine to use ledger lines for those three notes underneath middle C. However, on the viola, middle C is in the middle of the instrument. It's here on the second string. So we've got loads of notes that need to sit below middle C. And therefore, if we were to read the viola in the treble clef, we'd end up having to use loads of ledger lines underneath C and it would be quite difficult to read the music. So for that reason, we use the alto clef, where middle C sits right in the middle line of the clef, here. Now we've got plenty of space below middle C and above it for our notes to sit on. So, middle C sits in the middle of the alto clef. Working up from there, we can find D, E, F, G and A. And going down from middle C, we've got B, A, G, F. And e. So therefore, in the alto clef, the notes on the lines are F, A, C, E and G, and the notes in the spaces are G, B, D and F. Often, music theory exams will ask us to change music from the alto clef to the treble clef, or from the treble clef to the alto clef. One super easy way to change a note from alto clef to treble clef is to imagine the note one step higher and that will give you their note name in the treble clef. So for example, let's take this note here. If we move it up one step and change that alto clef into a treble clef, you can see that it's D. But in the alto clef, this is D above middle C. It's not this high D that we've got in the treble clef here. So the other thing we need to do is jump that note back down an octave and you can see that it's D one step above middle C. Make sense? Let's try another example. Here are four notes in the alto clef. Let's move them all up one step. We'll pop that treble clef on, and then we're gonna jump them all down an octave. So we can see that those notes are F, A, D, and G. And that's all there is to it. We can do the same thing in reverse to move notes from the treble clef into the alto clef. All we need to do is pop the notes down one step and up one octave. So for example, let's put G, B and C in the treble clef. Now we're going to move them down one step and up one octave. And there we have it. That is G, B and C in the alto clef. Let's practice by spelling some words in the alto clef. I'm going to show you four groups of notes on the stave in the alto clef and it's your job to work out what those notes are and what words they spell. Are you ready? Pause the video here and see if you can work the words out. Have you got it? That first word, we've got B, A, G. That spells bag. Number two, D, A, D. That spells dad. Number three, we've got C, A, B, B, A, G, and E. That spells cabbage. And number four, C, A, G, E. That spells cage. So there you have it. Now you know how to read notes in the alto clef and how to change notes between the alto and treble clefs. If you'd like more practice reading notes in the alto clef, switching between the alto and treble clefs and switching between the alto and bass clefs, 
you can find some Alto Clef resources along with other music theory stuff over on my coffee page at coffee.com forward slash music with Meg. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Have a lovely week and I'll see you next time. Bye.